Hi, and welcome to another episode of Six Five Guys. I'm Ed Mobley. And I'm Steve Lawrence. And folks, if you're a Star Trek fan, this is not a remake of Trouble with Trebles. Actually, we're surrounded by bags that we both used and, and have used in the past. Just like you guys, uh, you know, I'm sure each of you have at least a half dozen rear bags that uh, you either have made yourself or have bought online and maybe you found that they were useful and have moved on to something else. So we're here to discuss a little bit about things that we've gotten in the past and produced ourselves as well as what we're using now. Yeah, and, and we've learned as part of our journey that there are certain characteristics that we want in a rear support bag. You want something that provides good elevation control, Yep. something that is flexible, under a variety of different circumstances, something that is lightweight, mm -hmm. mobility, and also holds up well in, in, in the weather. So yep. your, your denim rear bag filled with rice. Yeah, versus a Cordura it, with exactly. a plastic fill. Exactly, yeah. exactly. Well, gosh, um, you've got a lot of stuff now for the folks here. You know my friend Ed uh, has a little bit of an OCD, and we had to do an intervention. We got Scott and Kevin over to his place uh, because he was out of control. He got himself a FAF walking foot industrial sewing machine, uh, a few yards of Cordura nylon and plastic fill, and before we knew it, um, he had bags coming out the yin yang in his basement, so uh, I'm glad we could help you out. Well, I, did, I, did you make any discoveries here? I appreciate that. Well, actually, actually, I did. So, what really precipitated my experimentation mm -hmm. was the change from the Accuracy International chassis type system with the butt hook to the Manners T2A, which has the the traditional slope rear end. And so the type of bag that I had been using for a number of years, and you use a very similar bag, is this tab gear rear bag. Now I modified it a bit with, with an extra strap, but a lot of folks In case you are, guys don't believe us, there is uh, the tab gear fire. <laughs> right, and, and, and I've actually put different materials in here, uh, but I, I ended up going with the, the polyfill because I found the original tab filling mm -hmm. was, was a little little rubbery. But again, these rectangular type of bags are, are very common and, and they're actually uh, very useful. Yeah. And I continue to use this, this style of bag among a, a couple of other bags. So you have a couple of wedgies in here. Why, why those? What were you trying to do there? So they're, they're popular. Mm -hmm. And because I could just make them up on the fly, I just reproduced them solely for the purpose of, of experimentation. And so what I learned is, 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 for example, you can purchase commercially two types of, of wedge bags, a, a small one and a large one. Mm -hmm. So I, I reproduced them based on the, the measurements that are, are published. And so let's take the wedge bag. It's, it's actually, I, I found, to be quite useful. You can have it upright like this for a high degree of elevation, and it yep. it gives you some elevation control. Yep. You can have it like this it's as more of a ramp, as a ramp. Yep. Or you can do it like this. What I really like is this position actually a, approximates a set of rabbit ears, like you're you're doing yeah, bench press shooting. Yep. Mm -hmm. So I found out that if you really want to group a rifle or maybe you're doing some load development... That would be a good choice for a rear bag. Yeah, that would okay. be a very good choice for a rear bag. Now, it doesn't have quite that elevation yeah. control, yep. but, but I found that's a, that's a very, very useful attribute of, of this style of bag. Some folks like to come in from the side mm -hmm. to, to give elevation control. I just... It, it, for me, it, for because the, okay. the, the stock would, would yeah. kind of slide like that. Okay. Now, um, moving from those, we obviously have more of the tube or cylindrical shape bags. Um, you know, I actually have a few of myself. This is a red tack gear uh, bag. And um, this one is made by Cross Tack. Uh, this one is a little bit smaller and it has sort of this non skid rubbery material. Uh, size actually has 
uh, kind of an interesting uh, type of feature in terms of how useful it is and under what conditions. And this red tack bag here is, is sort of the, the small, the small version. yeah the small version. Of course, I added an extra little little strap on here. Yeah. And then I actually made a slightly larger version to the, fill the Mondo sized uh, cylinder to fill the gap between this bag and what they actually call their tactical pillow. Mm -hmm. I wanted something that was kind of in the middle. I really didn't find a whole lot of use for it. It was yeah. it was kind of an experiment. I'll probably recycle the film. Yeah, now, you know, I do like these bags, um, but for me, they do have some limitations in terms of flexibility and under what conditions they're actually useful. This one, um, I actually like for an AR type of uh, shooting platform. I, I, this is the bag I'd probably grab and take with me. Um, I bought the Red Tech gear as again an experiment to see if it'd work with my new rifle for this season. I'm still um, haven't discarded it in terms of whether or not it will be useful to me this year. Um, so again, it's, it's kind of the discovery process. You, know, you, you try new gear, see if it works for you. And uh, again, I find it, it's useful under some circumstances, but I'm not. It's not the go-to bag for all all scenarios. Yeah, I used this for a while with my butt hook stock with my AICS because you could you could control the elevation from the mm -hmm. side turn and, it up on end maybe. and you can turn it up on end and even with the the T2A you could kind of move it uh, back and forth mm -hmm. so that that this is certainly a bag uh, that's that's pretty flexible yeah now um, you know some of you guys may actually have gone this route uh, this is one of the first bags I made and it's nothing more than I took uh, my wife's nylons, uh, discard, discarded pair of nylons, threw in some polyfill, doubled it over, right, knotted it, and I think there's two or three layers of nylons, and then threw it into a sock, right? So um, this is what I, one of the things I used when I first started getting into precision shooting and um, use it for a year. You know, it was okay. I mean, it's, it's a low-cost yeah. approach, and you know, if you guys don't want to spend a lot of money, that may be an alternative. Well, it works. I mean, if you're getting into it and you're repurposing that, 308 bolt action you right. have sitting in in your in your gun cabinet. Yeah, you can get rolling with something like yeah. that. All right, so let's talk a little bit about one of our current favorite bags. Our friends at Short Action Precision sent us out some eval bags. We liked them so much we actually ended up purchasing them. So this is their run and gun bag. Can we talk a little bit about why we like them so much. Yeah, they're they meet those attributes, those characteristics that we discussed yeah. earlier. They give really good elevation control. You can just turn them a number of different ways. Again, made out of Cordura and a... Is that micro the microfill? Uh, yes, the, the microfill. So again, we've had these very wet and muddy and they, they dry out and, yeah. and clean out uh, very well. And another thing is once you squeeze them into place, they're, they're, they're not mushy. It gives you a very... Yeah, they're very firm. A, a very firm. Mm -hmm. And we've just seen a lot of folks moving toward these type of, yeah. of polyfill bags. Now, a number of years ago, uh, the straight-laced bags uh, are very popular. They continue to be very popular. However, uh, there are sort of a limited production run that get made uh, periodically uh, this is a great alternative because it has a number of uh, features that are very similar to it, uh, but it is different. So you have the uh, sling swivel, so I actually attach this to the bus stock um, you know, before a stage. Uh, you can actually put this on the fore end, right? It's, it's super lightweight. You don't even know it's yep. there, so you can have a support for a, uh, a barricade, or you can even use it as a rear bag. And the fo I use it primarily as a rear bag, mm -hmm. and the folks at Short Action Precision have actually put together a video on the different ways you can, can yeah. use the bag, so that, that's actually pretty handy. This and, is, yeah. of course, <laughs> the Wee Bad Pump Pillow. Uh, you know, if you're going to go into match shooting and, and compete, must have piece of gear, at least in our, our book. Yeah, I mean, if, if I had to only bring one bag to a match, I would probably use my fist as a rear bag. <laughs> <laughs> and use this. And, and use this because yeah. this has turned out to be one of the most 
flexible and useful bags. Everything Absolutely. from when you're using a, a reverse kneeling yeah. position to you can slap it on top of a parapet and, and rest put your, your rifle. rifle right on top. Exactly. Yeah. If you really needed a lot of elevation, you could actually put it behind your Absolutely. rifle. Yeah, I use that quite a bit. It's surprising. People think, really, how can this be used as a rear bag? Well, it depends on the scenario. If you have a lot of times stages, you'll be, you know, have targets way up here and way down here. And you can use the corner as you a rear can. bag, right? If you need a lot of elevation to put rifle pointer down, you, you could come up to a position like this. And it and it's, uh, can be smushed down a little bit too. Well, and, and also, sometimes there's a course of fire where the bipod is actually too high. And yeah. so you can fold up your bipod and actually put the front of the rifle on this, and it actually gets it down lower than if you were to have the, uh, the bipod, bipod. Uh, bipod deployed. So yeah. just the great bag. Now, it, it does have a smaller sibling called the Todd Tack Pod. Pod. And I purchased it because I've seen some folks use it in, in a very mm -hmm. similar manner. Yeah, it's almost a smaller, thinner version as the Wee Bed Palm Pillow. It, it is. Personally, I haven't found this to be as usable mm -hmm. as as the larger Wee Bed, but it has been useful if I need a little bit of extra elevation. I, I can sit on it. And mm -hmm. because it's so lightweight, I, I take it with me anyway. I just mm -hmm. clip it onto my... Uh, backpack yeah. something something else for for folks to consider right so another use of these traditional square or rectangular bags is on barricades so when you when you have a, a barricade imagine my hand is mm -hmm. like the top of a barricade you can put it here at a 90 degree angle the rifle rests here the magazine rests here and it allows you to, to load into it. And I found out that it gives just a lot of stability. Absolutely. In fact, that's what I had used this bag for. I actually took some of the fill out and I had put some uh, 100 mile per hour tape around the fore end of my uh, AI AX chassis and used this as a dedicated bag right at the front of the rifle. And another thing that I'll use this for, sometimes even this might be too thick. And, and so what I'll do is, even when I'm using this, I've got this in close reach because there are a few times where I've had to jettison this and put this down flat mm -hmm. to, to give me some, some elevation control. Yep. So I know we were talking earlier about if you could bring three bags into competition, what would they be? What what would be your choices, Ed? If there are three bags that you could only three bags you could take into a match, what would they be? Right now, and again, this is a journey, so things change. That's right. But right now, if if I were limited to the three, there there would be this wee bag because of yep. its 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 flexibility. There would be this bag primarily as a rear bag again because mm -hmm. of its flexibility. And then I use this as a barricade bag and also as a rear bag in situations where, where I need something that, that, that really, really gets down low. Yeah. Now, if you had asked me that same question a few weeks ago, I would have had a very similar answer to yourself, right? Of course, you have the ubiquitous wee bad pump pillow, Correct. must have for, for match competition, the running gun bag, again, love that. And I would have said my trusty Sage Flat Shooters rear bag, which uh, has been very useful now as many of you know, I switched my match rifle to a from a chassis system to the Manners uh, T2A. T2A stock, um, and I found this bag to be a little bit too small. It's it's running out of its usefulness, and I actually developed something different. Um, I've been talking with uh, some friends of ours, and we talked about the growth of rear bags, and they said. Wouldn't it be interesting if you actually brought a beanbag chair? And now you've, you've started to experiment a bit and along, I started those, experiment. along those lines. Yeah, so you guys have seen it here first. I'm going to name this the Steve Backpod. And, like a turtle uh, shell or yeah, something? Yeah, it's a turtle shell. Now, obviously, it's very lightweight. And what I've done is taken some beanbag fill and uh, took a relatively cheap backpack and... I took the beanbag fill and filled it into a, a, a pillowcase and sewed that shut 
And so this thing is packed full. Now, I actually, I think I believe got the high score on a couple of stages uh, at the match yesterday, actually using this. You I did. used it as a, as a seat to sit on, uh, and it won't compress. And, um, you know, I, I laid on it, and it uh, is very lightweight, very comfortable. And it actually, you know, I've got some molly webbing, and I can put some stuff on the side here to carry in some additional gear. But I usually walk around with a battle belt anyways in matches. But, um, you know, I think for now, my choices would be these and this. Uh, we'll continue to see if this has some additional utility, but it's kind of an interesting and fun experiment. Yeah, and somebody might say, well, why don't you just use your backpack? Because I've got a, a backpack, so why is that well, better yeah, than using a conventional I've had some backpack. people yeah. make that uh, remark to me yesterday. Why not just throw some, some clothes or whatnot into a back backpack? Problem is, it becomes heavier to actually achieve the same amount of fluff, but it compresses down. So even if you stuff your your clothes or your Gore-Tex or whatever in there, uh, there may be you know uh, ammo cases or whatnot. It's a lot going to be a lot heavier to carry around all day, and it will actually compress. So it doesn't give you the compression resistance as beanbag fill does. Yeah, and with with my backpack with my iPhone and some of the other delicate equipment that I carry in there. I might lie on it, but I don't think I'm actually going to sit on it. Right. So, yeah, I'm really interested to see how, how that goes. Because, again, there was, there was one stage where, like you said, you doubled the average score on that stage. You were probably the highest score in the whole match. And being able to sit on that just offered a lot of stability. So... Yeah. Yeah, let's, let's see what happens with that. Well, great. Uh, hopefully you guys found this interesting. You know, it's fun to kind of show these different bags. And in fact, I'm sure you guys have experimented as much as we have in terms of trying out new things, doing some DIY projects. Would love to, to see and hear about those. So please share them up. Remember, folks, life's an adventure. Stay on target.